Zach's Rank Buys, stocks with a short-term buy or strong buy recommendation. And now, here are more Zach's Rank Buys. A couple of familiar names top this edition of stock picks in the growth and income category. Todd Bunton, our growth and income stock strategist here with us to fill us in just on what those names are and why they're on his radar. First one's Walmart, WMT, the ticker. That's a real familiar name. Yeah. And uh, they've been in the news uh, the past day or so here. Yeah, they have. Uh, they're the world's largest retailer, uh, and they've actually had a little bit of momentum lately. They, uh, After basically 12 years of their stock going nowhere, uh, they actually might be poised for a breakthrough here. Uh, the company's delivered three consecutive positive earnings surprises. They've actually had three consecutive months of positive same-store sales growth, too. So that's really sparked, uh, ignited analysts to raise estimates. Mm. And, and that's something we haven't seen for a while from Walmart, but, but they do have some, some momentum here. And I think it's still a growth story here. Uh, based on consensus estimates, analysts are expecting 10% earnings per share growth this year, 9% growth next year. And the way they're going to get there is through, uh, again, some some positive uh, same store sales growth, but also they're expanding internationally. Uh, they're, gain they're gaining traction in the emerging markets. They've had a, a setback recently with uh, what's going on in China, uh, but, uh, but I think that long term, that's still a, a solid growth driver for this company. They're also gonna get there through, uh, they're, they're rolling out what's called neighborhood markets. They're, they're a smaller store from their traditional super centers, but they're gonna be more in urban locations. They already have a few of those. Um, so that, that should help drive, drive sales growth, drive earnings per share growth. And they also have what's called Walmart Express. And that's also a smaller concept. And, and what they're trying to do there is actually capture the market share that they've lost a little bit over the last couple of years to dollar stores. It's kind of a sad state of affairs for the U.S. economy when people are trading down from Walmart to the dollar stores. But hey, it's a trend that's happening, and Walmart's trying, trying to get those customers back to the Walmart Express stores. And they're also going to grow earnings per share through uh, share buybacks. And the company's returned a lot, a lot of cash back to their shareholders. In the first six months of 2011, they've, they've spent over $6 billion buying back stock and paying dividends. So you, you do have a growth story here, uh, you solid maybe upper single digit, low double digit earnings per share growth, and a dividend that yields 2.6%. And when we look at the chart here, over the last 10, 11 years, they've increased that at an average rate of 18%. So you're getting growth, you're getting income, and you're getting it at a, at a reasonable price. They trade about 12 times forward earnings. Now back in 2000, they were trading about 38 times. So people say, Walmart, it's, it's it hasn't done anything in 12 years. Well, 12 years ago, they were, they were wildly overvalued. Now it seems like it seems like that they're pretty reasonably valued. So maybe their stock's going to start following their earnings per share growth and and their income component. So it's a good total return story here. Still a lot to like. All right, we'll have to see what happens. Makes sense though that consumers are trading down uh, when you go to figure uh, factors like consumer confidence is oh, at the lowest level it's, it's been since '09. It's very dreary. Yeah, it's great recession levels, and uh, and, and they're struggling. High unemployment, rising costs. They they got to cut back somewhere. Okay. Well, the uh, economic barometer that they are, we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Uh, Intel I N T C is another one that you've written about uh, recently. Uh, technology company. Yeah, they're the world's largest uh, semiconductor manufacturer, yeah. and they've kind of gotten out of favor with investors too. Uh, you know, 12 years ago they were they're a great growth story. Everybody loved them, uh, and people are worried right now that new technologies like tablets, you know, the iPad, it's going to destroy the PC market. And and Intel, they're not in tablets right now. They they are in PCs, and yeah, and that's going to PC gonna, market's been contracting for a while. It well, you'd think that by reading the headlines, but actually in the U.S. Uh, it's been at least flat to slightly positive because notebooks are still selling well. But the real story for Intel is is the emerging markets. The company actually derives 57% of its revenue from Asia Pacific. Mm. And really, the PC market there is booming. Uh, notebooks are, are growing at double-digit paces over there. So the company actually delivered a very solid third quarter. Uh, revenue was up 28% year-over-year. Earnings per share up 25%. Again, mm. that's they, they said... We saw double-digit growth in, in notebook PCs, so so it is a growth story, uh, and I think people are overlooking that uh, it's because of the emerging markets. And analysts expect strong growth to continue. They've been raising their estimates uh, very sharply after the after the last beat. They actually 
it was their 11th consecutive positive earnings surprise. So strong earnings momentum. Analysts expect 19% earnings per share growth this year, 5% next year. So you are getting growth there, um, and you're getting you're getting it at a very reasonable price as well. Shares trade at just nine times forward earnings. Uh, that's a discount to the industry average of 12 times. Its peg ratio is 0.9 based on a five-year expected growth rate. And when we look at their income, that that's really a, a a great story here. They pay a dividend that yields 3.4 percent, and they've they've raised that they've raised their dividend at an average rate of 25 percent going back to 2000. So they're a very shareholder friendly company as well, mm -hmm. and they're buying back ton, tons of stock too. They spent over four billion dollars in the last quarter buying back stock. So that's going to help drive earnings per share growth. Good growth story, good income story, great price. All right. Speaking of buying back stock, do you own either of these two? I don't. All right. Check out other stock pick ideas on our homepage if you're not there already. That would be Zax.com, and there is where we put four new stock pick ideas up for you daily, one in each of the investing categories that we feature and write about on the website. With Todd Button, I'm Terry Ruffalo.